thank you. Well, I'm going to give a presentation in Spanish. I won't speak Guarani because it's quite a complex language. And I'm sure that some linguists will be looking at my presentation. And I, uh, uh, so what is my presentation about? What I want to show is the experience that we had uh, at our registry when we implemented the domain, um, especially to adopt uh, Spanish, first to adopt a Spanish language, but also thinking of Guarani. That is a language that, as I'll show later on, is uh, well embedded, well enrooted in our blood. We speak it on a daily basis, and we saw it necessary to be able to implement it, to include it, and also to find some future uh, work uh, that will enable us uh, to uh, implement it fully. I just wanted to show you the statistics to show you that Guarani is not limited to Paraguay, but it is actually spoken in neighboring countries, and the percentages are quite high. As a matter of fact, the institution in Paraguay in charge of uh, uh, keeping it alive is the Secretariat of uh, Linguist, uh, the Linguist Secretariat, has linkages with linguists from other countries where they basically uh, they work together to keep the language alive. So what are the percentages? They are not uh, this year. They uh, these are 2022 languages, and it shows that it is even growing, showing that the language is used uh, in households every day. In uh, very often, it's a native Guarani, and in uh, most cases, people use a mix. Here we call it Yopara. Um, that is when we mix uh, uh, Spanish and Guarani, but this does not just have to do with our daily use, uh, um, but it is in uh, our national constitution that enshrines the use of this language. So uh, from a uh, primary school, the uh, Guarani is uh, an additional subject in uh, our uh, uh, syllabus. So our constitution establishes that we have uh, grammar, and uh, and um, there is an institution that sees to the persistence and the survival of uh, this language. The alphabet of this language basically, in some cases, is similar to Spanish, with some variance in the vowels for um, the uh, nasal sounds. You in include uh, some vowels uh, with the, and the Y uh, that uh, have um, a, a, have a very similar graphic of uh, the apostrophe that in Guarani is called puso. Let me briefly go through the concepts that we use in uh, in terms of uh, technological uh, uh, terms. Uh, uh, to see how we are supporting this. Let me mention the ASCII, that is the United States standard uh, code uh, for computing codes, Unicode, that in a way supports uh, in the inclusion of uh, the domain names with uh, AN, not just for us, that. Uh, uh, speak Spanish, but for all the languages globally. And the internationalized domain names, the IDNs, that make it possible for multilingual countries to have a full adoption in of the computing systems. And in some cases, it has to do with the domain name, but uh, actually, the, it's a universal acceptance that is a vaster concept. In this table, I'm showing some translations, some equivalences that we observe based on the Punic code, that is a code that supports 
uh, the domain names in a standardized manner. What does it consist of? It consists of the translation of uh, the uh, words or names written in Unicode, and they take this to the ASCII, the native table that uh, is supported in my specific case. I make reference to the DNS protocol. I also want to mention this project that is universal acceptance. It's a, a project that is very helpful and that promotes the inclusion of all the languages globally, and we include the domain names. In particular, they supported us a lot and they guided us to see the potential paths that we could follow to provide support in our technology tools. So what were the initial efforts when deploying the domain names on the dot py? Well, we had in, in our tables, we had to include the, uh, the vowels with their accents uh, for uh, the Spanish version and uh, the vowels in Guarani. We also have the Y with the, this apostrophe that is uh, like an, an additional vowel and the, the G with the, the apostrophe is a nasal um, sound and uh, the puso is a consonant in Guarani. The puso that we know in most languages uh, as like a punctuation sign, but in English, in Guarani, it is not. And I also want to mention some uh, companies Oh, the Universal Acceptance uh, Project um, shows how global companies that uh, work hard for the adoption, for the full adoption of this uh, choice and the tests that we conducted um, reflect that. Now, let me show you some of our results. When deploying this, first of all, with uh, the email services, we enabled two names in Guarani. One of them is Ipora. Ipora means right, correct, good. And another domain that we enabled is Yabuya. That means let's be happy. And so you'll notice that in the first case, what we did was to introduce a nasal vowel, and in the same one, we in the second, we tasted it with a puso uh, character, that is a consonant. This is a view of uh, the email address that uh, the Universal Acceptance Project makes available to check whether a name uh, does, is not uh, supported in an email. In our experience, we observe that apparently the essential checking is to see whether the zone configured has the MX registry configured, activated, enabled. Because in the pre initially we had not configured it and we didn't know that it didn't have a support. Uh, uh, and uh, after making that adjustment, then we already we succeeded and it has support. So then the second step was to configure using one of these platforms suggested by the project to see whether we could generate and send uh, email. Um, and we succeeded with the two domains uh, that we had opened. This is what had to do with authentication. We saw that in some, uh, uh, sometimes we could see the uh, PUNI uh, code uh, instead uh, of uh, the other one in particular. And then after sending and receiving mails, we saw that the way it was seen, the visualization, visualization the users had uh, support. The experience was enough to be able to send and receive emails. 
We also studied other alternatives, other options, where we realized that there was basic support, at least. We also did tests regarding web services. In this case, we take into account that to access any web application, what we normally do is to do have a browser write the domain name in the address bar. <coughs> so here, the results we obtained with the first domain were successful. It was satisfactory. <clears throat> this was not the case with the second domain, where we used the other variants we had found for the pulso consonant. And this has its explanation, because if we Look at the RFC standard 5890 states that states general guidelines for internationalized domain names. We note that the punctuation marks cannot be considered as part of the domain name. So this has to do with apostrophe and similar symbols. And here, specifically, we have to take something into account. As I mentioned before, Puso in Warani is not a punctuation sign. It's a consonant. So there is a difference in the concept between what is established in the standard in general terms and what we have to consider on our side to see how we can figure out a solution. So this is making a suggestion to the standard or proposing another type of character in the punicode which could be supported and also considered to adopt this consonant. Why is this important? Because in the Guarani language there are words that could not be written without using this consonant. You have words such as pronouns, uh, nouns, verbs in the entire Guarani language. So the use of puso is widespread. It's one further consonant. So we tried different characters in the Punicode that were written similarly, the first two would fall under the standard, and the others are optional characters. But they all behave and are recognized as punctuation marks. There is a limitation in order to fully deploy the use of this consonant. Now, considering that the DNS essentially uses the Punicode translation, we had no issues, at least visually, regarding the configuration of the NS zone or DNS zone, and also with the signing with the DNSSEC. An internationalist domain name is appears like this, where instead of writing the domain name with IN, we put the punicode. And this also bears in mind the ASCII base of the punicode that allows you to sign this with DNSSEC and tools such as the platform that does the correct DNSSEC verification, and internally it uses that concept of the protocol, but the visualizations are done considering the domain with the IDN. So it tends to provide this visual support, at least, for the users. These are There are some more specific tools for doing the diagnosis, such as a command line. We see that this dig command line does have support for this in Warani language. And this is the same for the other testing domain using the domain PY. So checking this with a console tool, we see 
that we obtain the diagnostic results, only including these options of not doing a detailed verification regarding the rules, the ID rules. Otherwise, the tool shows that this domain is not supported. And this is considering the RFC that I mentioned before. So the DNSSEC diagnostic tools do consider verification of signing that is done on the configured DNS zone. A further point that is quite useful for people who have to write in Guarani language is a standardized keyboard. Microsoft has a Guarani keyboard that you have to set up and also enable this keyboard has considered almost every single character. And we see that the puso is somehow not fully aligned. This is a slight challenge we have. We couldn't figure out a solution for free distribution OSs. I use open source software, but if anyone can provide some guidance here, I will be most grateful. So to sum up, what do we what are we considering in terms of future work uh, work so that other countries argentina bolivia and uruguay can correctly write names in guarani basically to see whether all the components such as emails support full idn for languages we also have to work together in order to fully accept this Pusso consonant in the IT systems, in the technological systems, and also to widely standardize a keyboard that includes all the characters of the Guarani language. So thank you very much. Aguye, that means thank you very much in Guarani. And I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. Any questions? Please ask your questions in Guarani. So thank you very much in this first LACNOG session this Thursday. Let me remind you that we now have lunch, but at 2 p.m. we'll continue with the remaining sessions. Thank you very much.